This episode of Super Boothers is brought to you by the Photo Booth Expo in Las Vegas. This coming March 12th to March 14th, 2018 at the Westgate Hotel and Casino. Visit photoboothexpo.com and use promo code SUPERB2018 for a key pass or SUPERB2018E for an exhibits-only pass. See you there. Welcome to Super Boothers. I am Ryan. And I'm Ismail. And today we are excited stop, to be talking. Stop, stop, oh. stop, 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 stop. We have to talk. Okay. The most ridiculous thing happened. And I'm in the movie theater. I am I just got finished with an event uh, the day before. And at the end of the movie, it's like 930. And I check my phone and it's a thumbtack message. And it says, blah, 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 wants to hire you. And so I click on there and, you know, look at the details. It's scheduled for the next day. It's four hours. And they've already agreed to the pricing. And he goes you know, what's our next steps? I said, just send me your email. I'll send you all the paperwork. And he sends me, or I I asked him for the address. I said, what's the address? And he sends me the address. I'm like, why is this familiar? Okay. And then I said, why is this familiar? And then I, I think I'm like, that I think is a Marriott, but Marriott's further down. This one is shorter. What's going on here? And then I said, and what's the location? He sends me back that it's a strip club. Uh Uh-oh. Of course you were familiar with the address. Really, no. (laughs) (laughs) However, we were talking about this with Justin. And if you look at, listen to our first episode with Justin Jowett, one of the questions I asked him towards the end was, what has been your craziest event? And he goes, it was at a strip club. And I, I was like, I have never done an event at a strip club. I've done events everywhere. A strip club is just not one that I have done this at. So I'm thinking to myself, oh, shit, I go, I guess I have to take it, if only for this podcast to tell you the viewers of how this would go. I am not, I'm not exactly a prude. Like, I, I'll completely do anything for money. Well, not anything for money, but I will do most things for money. <laughs> so you, you, sac- you sacrificed yourself for the benefit of the Super Boothers audience. Absolutely, because... It was too good not to take it. I was like, okay, this, if anything, it's going to be a great story. So. So what did you learn? <laughs> <laughs> so, no. So, th- so this is the thing. So I put the information in the system and send it out to him. And I go upstairs. I'm like, you know, it's a Sunday. I really don't want to do this. I'm just going to go ahead and cancel the event and just say like, you know, oh, I'm sorry, you know. I don't know, make up something, a tenant can't do it or whatever. And like I hype myself up that I'm not going to do it. So I go downstairs and I'm logging onto my computer and the light turns green. I'm like, Jesus, this sucks. They, they paid. They paid the bill. Now I'm stuck. Now I have to do it. So did they pay in singles? They t- oh, <laughs> ouch! Did. You did have to. You know what? The strippers are people too. That's true. Stripper strippers' lives matter. That's true. So I wouldn't know, but that's what I've heard. I'm so sure. So I get to the event, and it's a festival. Let's just call it Stripper Fest, and they have this huge. It's like in the back parking lot of the strip club. They've completely opened everything up. They did a dodgeball competition. I guess they won, like the winning team won a thousand dollars. They had a bar. They had like an insurance company. They had like a little girl selling those little scentsy candles. What? It it was just. It was so weird. It was so so weird. I, I look at him. I'm like, you know, where do you want the photo booth? He's like, oh, in the corner. Blah blah blah. Okay, fine. Then they start, I guess, doing like it's it was I guess it was done to raise money for charity. Charity was the name of one of the strippers, I think. <laughs> yeah. Um it, it was it was it, it was so bizarre. It was so bizarre. And I'm thinking to myself, how how on earth am I gonna get through this? I mean, it was if anything, it was just people watching for one. So they tell me where to go. I plug in 
I plug in everything. We're all good to go. You know, it was outside. I was under this like little umbrella thing. I'm there no longer than 10 minutes and it starts downpouring. I mean, like the skies opened up and just let it all hang out. I mean, there was a lot of rain. And it was basically a wet t-shirt event. That was the thing. He was announcing uh, the wet t-shirt contest was in two hours. And I'm looking around. I'm like, "Um, the wet t-shirt contest is now. Like, this is already happening. It was... It was so strange. So events over. Everyone's happy. You know, I it, today he sends me an email and he goes, oh, can I get the photos from the event? I'm like, uh oh, can I send get the him, photos from the event? That's what I want. He, go, he, he sends I send him the link. I saw nothing, by the way, like they it was outside. I guess there are laws that prevent actual nudity from going on. I sent him the normal email. It says, thank you so much for taking care for doing this event with us. Please let me know if you have any events more in the future. And I'm thinking to myself, oh my gosh, he's, he sends me an email back and he goes, are you available on this date? I'm like, that was quick. crap, I got to do it again. But at least it was fun. It sounds like it was fun. It was money. Money's fun. The other things are also fun at that event. <laughs> Not sweaty money. It was, it was, it was so strange. It was, it was very strange. I did not, I have never been to a strip club, period. So this was like culture shock and it takes a lot to shock me culturally. Well, as long as they were happy with your service, that's what matters. (laughs) Now you you mentioned in the beginning that you got this through Thumbtack. I did. I know that that's a popular and controversial topic with a lot of boothers out there. Uh, I don't understand why. I mean, it's it's they just introduced this new feature called Pro Assist, and this episode, by the way, is not sponsored by Thumbtack. It was just by way that this kind of happened. No, but I think it's, so, it's a good topic because I see a lot of people. I'll tell you why people don't like it. So they view it as a platform that supports lowballing prices. So it's 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 usually a place where, and for people that don't know about it or are thinking about using it, uh, customers can go on there, request a photo booth, and then their request goes to five. Oh, only five vendors can bid on that request. Particular lady, yeah. So you're kind of pitting vendor, vendors against each other to kind of uh, compete on price. So the customer wins and the boothers have lower pricing. Uh, that's why people don't like it. And I've also seen, they've changed this recently, but in the past they had the customers select the price range. And even the highest price range that they had, at least in my area, was very low. So they couldn't go any further past that. But I think they changed that recently. A bit. No, that they don't limit you on price. Um, they just integrated this new feature called Pro Assist. So the way how it used to work before was you would get a lead saying, here are the dates that they want. Here are the requirements or features or stuff that they would like. And then if you want to bid on it, you can you know, click to bid on it, submit your price for whatever they wanted, and then – the customer gets five options, up to five options. Not everyone bids on it. Um, and then kind of they can go from there. So then whenever you win the lead, um, they ask you for a review and all that other good stuff. So this is a thing is in, I operate Thumbtack in three markets. Um, I don't do it in one particular one just because I don't really have the time, but in this particular one, um, there it, it is. It is, I would say, at least top three ways of people in this market finding out about photo booth vendors in in, in their area. I was going to say, so how do you – I, th- I think it would be valuable for people to learn how you use it in a way that benefits you as opposed to complaining about how it's bringing down pricing in the market. How do you use it? Sure. Benefit? So you you don't have to be competitive with your pricing at all. Um, there are times where I'm the most expensive option. There are times where I am the cheapest option. I mean, it just kind of goes, you know, in different ways. So they just started this new feature called Pro Assist where you don't have to babysit the leads anymore. So you can set parameters on how many hours, what specific dates, all of it. And then the system automatically sends you or sends the client um, the bid. Well, you don't pay for that until the client responds. This has seriously been kind of groundbreaking. I think that whenever I first did it, I just kind of like had it off in the background. Someone would respond, you know, whatever. Of the five people that have responded to to my quote within the last 30 days, all five have booked. 
And I think I've paid, you pay a little bit higher for the actual, um, lead, I guess. Um, it ranges anywhere between, you know, $7 to $20. But if you're making anywhere between, you know, 500 to 800, I think that it's kind of worth it. So that makes sense to me logically. I think that's a better way to do it where it kind of automates the outreach and you only pay when someone replies. But I'm curious, what do you say to them that gets them to book you? Cause that they're getting five other people too. So what is it that absolutely, you say absolutely. to get them to book you with know, you, even though you're higher priced? Yeah, you know, I don't know. I, 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 this is just kind of a little phenomenon. I think that um, I changed the verbiage to where it says, we now include real-time texting, animated GIFs, and boomerangs. And I, I we just booked a groom whose wedding is um, not this Saturday. but No, I take that back. It is this Saturday. I said boomerang. You would have thought I said I'm giving him an entirely gold head-to-toe wedding. Like, he was just so excited that this thing could boomerang. And, and and I know that you and I had talked about this where why are people so excited whenever they can just do it on their phone? There is just something about having a unit I don't get it. at your at your event that just does it for you. Yeah, I still struggle to understand that, especially with a younger crowd, because they all can do all that stuff on their mobile phone. And the phone is easier to move around than the whole unit. But you're right. There's something about having that at your event that for some reason people are drawn to. My and my particular photo booth is all LEDs and it glows and I think that's a little bit of a, an appeal for it. Um, other than that, I you know I really don't know. So tell me about okay. I get maybe you change some words. Maybe that has an impact. Maybe it's a bigger impact than you expect. But what about your profile? Do you have a lot of photos? Do you have videos? Do you have a lot of reviews? Sure. Yeah, um, I have I have a lot of reviews on there. Um, we were best of 2015, 2016, and from my understanding, 2017 doesn't get announced um, until towards the end of the year. Um, I, I think that helps. Um, I think that, and truthfully, up until maybe 45 days ago, I haven't been on there since 2014. So the profile has been up there, but I haven't been actively using it. I've only been actively using it since I got that email that they started the pro assist thing. And I've been killing it. And I'm like, why have I been doing this the entire time? Because they didn't have the pro assist before. <laughs> well, that's true for one. Um, but no, I, I think it's kind of groundbreaking. You know, it's really worked for me. And that's the thing is on my profile, I can click and I can see where other people have bid. It doesn't tell me the company name. It says company A, B, C, D, or E. Um, and where I list out in that. And there's a little graph that says, oh, really? you know, here's the high, here's the low. And here's where you kind of fall in between. I'm not cheapest i'm not the most expensive most of the time i'm somewhere in the middle interesting so th this kind of also goes back to the point like we've discussed this in a couple of shows where uh the pressure to reply immediately versus taking your time like kelly was saying in, in one of the episodes the the thing here is that thumbtack sends those instantly i believe so yeah they do it for you so um if you you have to have your account full um and if not i have it set to where if there's no credits in my account that they just charge the credit card for however many credits are needed to respond to that lead um and again you only get you only get charged if the lead contacts you so you send up all that information um and then you can follow up for free yeah i'll be honest i've experimented with thumbtack in the past not with the new pro assist feature but i've experimented with them in the past and I tried a lot of different things, and I, I did get a few clients through them. But my experience overall was that I did see a lot of lowballing, uh, low prices. People were always asking for ridiculously low prices because other vendors were offering uh, those prices, and it kind of uh, turned me away a bit. Uh, so I, I've been focusing mostly on Google AdWords; it's been working for me. But now that they have this new feature, I think that may be uh, something that will get me go back and try it. You know, I mean, it's only money. Um, <laughs> but this is the thing. I think that they have they have made it to where the client is clearly pre-qualified enough. And they have three different things where it says, you know, I want to book one now. I plan on booking one or I'm just researching. So you can narrow it down to people that are planning to book one mm -hmm. um, or have already made the decision to book one. And you can narrow it down as much as you want. And it says, you know, how many estimated amount of leads come in that feed that that uh, meet that requirement, I guess. Yeah. Um, and I think from an outsider's perspective, you know, you can complain about Thumbtack all you want. I know a lot of people really despise them, but they seem to be listening to all the uh, unpleased comments out there because this shows that they're like the biggest complaints that I've heard were, it seems like you're throwing money into a black hole. 
You're spending money. You can. You absolutely can. And there's they had a feature where if you would respond to this person, they wouldn't reply back, but yet you've already spent the credits. Exactly. You could you could dispute the credits to where they would refund it. But the it didn't ha- they it originally started to where you had to initiate it, then it became an automatic refund, and then now they don't even mess with it. Now they only do it whenever the client contacts you because a client isn't going to contact someone if they're not interested. So that's their way of, of reducing it. And you know what? They charge a little bit of a higher premium. I'm completely fine with that because yeah. right now I'm five for five. Yeah. So I, again, I'm curious more about what exactly are you saying in these quotes? Is it more like, do you put pricing there? Do you just send a generic, here's what we do, contact you know me what? more? Yeah, absolutely. So I send- the nitty gritty, come on. Yeah, yeah. So I send, um, they ask for, in your request, you can ask for, you know, f- f- five hours. Well, then it'll automatically send the five hour quote. What I do is no matter what number of hours they send, I send a list of, you know what, here's the three, four, five, and six hour pricing. So where if, you know what, they, you know, we're fine with three, we can bump it up to four, or you know what, we did six, we need to go down to five. Either or, all that pricing is still included. And I know that that's absolutely helped me um, because it just gives you room to make the client feel that they're in charge and that they can, you know, make the decision. There are times where if someone fires off a seven hour quote, you as a photo booth person say, well, who's seven hours? I get to rent this thing out. Let's check up the price a little bit. And then they go away and then you never hear from them again. This will allow you to still retain them and to still keep the conversation open. If a client is responding to you, that is them giving a buying signal to you that they are still interested just because they're not you know, saying, oh, book me now, or how do I give you money? Um, the fact that they're still talking to you and you're keeping that dialogue open, um, it helps build you a relationship with that client. And the client, I think, ends up trusting you if you're giving them valuable information to where, you know, you're kind of just not wasting their money. Yeah, I think that that's a great point, looking for buying signals, even when, and I'm sure everyone's experienced this, even when someone's coming to you and saying, you know, hey, I got another company that'll do it for this much. Can you let can them, you, can let you, them, can absolutely you, let them. But, but the fact that they're coming to you, like my response is like, why don't you book them then? It's, if it's such a great deal, why don't you book them? Why are you coming to me? That's a buying signal to me that they absolutely, that absolutely. you offer that the other person's not offering. Yes. My, my thing is, is to call their bluff. If, well, someone is going to be willing to give you this many hours at this price, take the deal, go for it. I don't care. I get a Saturday off. Yeah. I do that. Same um, thing. I encourage them. No. No, absolutely. If you find a better deal, take it. I am just not going to waste my time or money if you're not going to be happy in the end result. I think that if there is a very much a happy medium to where you maybe can meet someone in the middle if it's a dead weekend. Sure, absolutely. I'm first one to do that. I think that if there is such a large gap, no. Um, One thing that I will do if someone says, you know, I will give you, you know, this, 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 and this for X amount of dollars. And, you know, you are charging so much more. You know what? I will go ahead and do a memory book or something for free to where it doesn't really cost me much. I still retain the business. The client feels that they're not getting gypped or taken advantage of. And you're really respecting, really respecting their, their business and their patronage. So it sounds like you are on the side of setting the longer message up front so that the customer has all the information as opposed to sending something short just to initiate a conversation um i, I think, think that with both. uh it can it can go both ways i would much rather give someone too much information in the beginning especially with thumbtack it with thumbtack all my cards are out there here's what we give you great fantastic because what i don't want someone to do is i don't want someone to ask me a stupid question and then i get charged for it that i don't want to do i want to make sure that if you read that top to bottom that you have answered all of your questions and then you're if you're asking me a question it is an actual question because i have to pay for that now that's a great point because this new feature you get charged once they submit a question or something to yes. you. So you want to prevent that as opposed to the previous way where you may have just wanted to start a conversation and then get them engaged. So this is a little bit different. Yeah. Yeah. Because whenever you did that before you would send, you know, just a little tidbit because you've already paid for it with this. I want to make sure that all their questions are answered before they come to me. And these five that you've booked so far on this new feature, do you like have the app on your phone and you respond immediately or do you not really put any? It, so it responds, it responds automatically. Um, once they, once they reply back to you, 
when they re- reply back to me, yes, I get a notification on my phone. It happened to have been during business hours with the exception of the strip club because it happened the day before. Um, the day before, which I will say this, since that I have changed it to where I only get quotes that are within seven days that are further than seven days out. Because what I don't want to do is I don't want to be scrambling last minute to get all this crap done, you know, with 24 hours. Um, I will say this. I looked at the others that responded. Um, only one other person responded to him. So it was, I know that I know that I got that business because I was practically the only one available and he, he was just happy for someone. Yeah. And he was happy for someone just to meet meet the requirement of, Hey, I need someone tomorrow. He didn't care about pricing. I don't think apparently money flies around in those places. I've I've heard. heard. There's lots of vendors selling photo booths, backdrops, props, and all sorts of other stuff. You didn't even think you needed. So what's one place where you can see and compare everything all at once. The internet. No, try again. The Google. No, the photo booth expo. Come see us live and in person at the Westgate Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, March 12th through the 14th. We have some fantastic giveaways, and we can't wait to see you. And now back to the show. The other thing that I was curious about is other people seem to think that Thumbtack, your experience with Thumbtack may vary on your geographic location. Um, Like I haven't been able to crack it here in my New York location. It seems like you're doing pretty well down there. Do you think that there's some merit to people's concern about the locations? Absolutely. I think that there are, there's another one out there called event detective. Um, I just think it depends on what market you're in. I was reading uh, something on photo booth network, how there was a thumbtack conversation. And this one gentleman had said that in his market, thumbtack was King. There is no other. Um, I think that there's something to be said for that. I know that, you know, the knot is popular in some areas. Um, Wedding wires popular in others. I don't know. I don't know why that is. But the lesson there is to just experiment with all the different, you know, potential sources of customers and see what works for you in your area. Sure, it's only money. So you've cracked the code. I have not. What are some uh, tips that you give people that are listening to try to get success with Thumbtack? Go to your local strip clubs. No, I'm kidding. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I'm with you so far. Um, <laughs> no, no. Um, one of the things that with the thumbtack is very good about giving you the tools that you need to succeed. They don't want to take your money and run with it. They just don't. That's not their goal. They wouldn't be in business for long if they did that. Um, the, it, thumbtack has a lot of resources to make you succeed. Um, I will say this, the more reviews you can get, the better. So whenever you get started, you can, they're called offline reviews. They're not exactly verified reviews, verified reviews or where someone asks for a specific service, they go through the process, they select you, it's done through the system. And then you have an opportunity to send them the offsite reviews where you just send all your past clients a link that says, hey, fill this out. They type in their name, their email, their review, and you're good to go. Um, I think reviews absolutely help. I remember I attended a workshop maybe like three years ago at the JW Marriott downtown in Houston. And it was with Wedding Wire. And there was this one particular DJ that had like 250 reviews. And he was killing it in his market because everyone just saw, wow, 250 other people had a great experience. The probability that I will have a great experience will be the same. And and that is very much accurate. And he, good Lord, I don't know how he did it, but he was raking it in. Yeah. I think I think the other thing to keep in mind is that it's it's very easy and tempting to fall into the negative Nancy role of oh Thumbtack is horrible and nobody's making money. The reality is it's a huge company. There's thousands of people making money booking events on Thumbtack. Uh, it may not work for you in your area or for your business, but you should try it and have an open mind and test it out first to see if it will work for you. And I think what Ryan is showing is that. It does work in certain instances, and I'm I'm still curious to hear more tips because I'm I got my notepad out. You know, I I'm don't, gonna try. I'm gonna if, try it out. What do I do? If you're asking me for the secret sauce, I just don't know just yet. I mean, I'm really kind of stumbling around with this because this feature is still brand new, and I I don't know how many actually um, have been sent out. I don't know how many requests have been coming through. I just know that within the last thirty days, five have come in. And I've booked all five and they've been at my rate. 
Um, I think that all there, all of them could very much be circumstantial. Um, I just booked one. It's a fabulous one. It is at a car, it is at a car dealership and they just said that they did this. And it, actually, now that I think about it, I had a conversation with her today and she said that the reason why she booked it was because she saw that we had green screen availability on there. And I said, the green screen is an additional fee. I was able to charge her more than what was quoted on Thumbtack. So I think that's also attributed to wow. giving up all that information up front. Um, I think that the more information you give and the more questions they can answer on their own just kind of pre-qualifies them for you. Um, come to think of it, actually, one thing that I do get frustrated with is there are times where I will send out a very long email and someone will email back, charge me 12 bucks, which is a lot of money for a single lead, I'll admit. She came back and she goes, well, what's included? And I'm thinking to myself, read the first five lines of the email. And you know what? Then I go on and I say, well, this, 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 this is, this is included in one sentence. And then they usually respond with something. Well, does it include this? Does it include that? Yes, absolutely. No, we don't include this, but X, Y, and Z are included. So again, just getting that conversation going, I think is very important. I always said, if you can get a client in front of me talking to me, I'll have a check from them in, you know, 20 minutes. Uh, these conversations remind me of, there's like a big debate in the marketing world about long form copy versus short form copy. And for people listening that don't know what copy is, it's just the, the text on your page or on your ad. And it's, it's always a big debate on what's more effective, but what I'm realizing from talking to you all the times that you mentioned, oh, I said boomerang and they bought it. I said green screen and that's what got her. I think there's something to be said about writing a long detailed um, response to people that list out everything you do. And you may wonder, well, who's going to read that? Everyone's used to tweets and snaps and whatever else they got out there now. But people who are looking for that solution, they do spend the time reading it. Think about someone who's balding, Right. They have a pain. They will read 40 pages of balding material sure, online. Absolutely. Because that's what they're looking for. And what if are someone's you implying? For, nothing. Is that a read? Nothing. You see my hair thinning, right? No. I don't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> but the point is, uh, mention those things because you never know what people will resonate and click with. This one might want the green screen. This one might want the boomerang. You got to put it all out there to hopefully get the person that's looking for those things. You know, and that's the thing is as often as I encounter people and, you know, sell myself and whatever, I'm, I'm still interested to this day how people retain stuff. There is one client that I just did. I said, ring light. You would have thought I was speaking the gospel from the Lord on high. She hung on to that word ring light and every email that she had to me said, ring light, ring light, ring light, ring light, ring light, ring light, ring light. And we got there saw the ring light and she was like, Oh my God, this thing's amazing. And she had really hyped up this ring light. She didn't care that the thing printed. She didn't care that the thing texted. She didn't care about that. All she wanted was the ring light. Yeah. But it, it can even go farther than that. Like the even sillier things like, Hey, I'm a big basketball fan. It's got nothing to do with photo booths or events, but a person that's a basketball fan, that'll catch their eye and have them connect with you more as an operator, even though that's got nothing to do with the service. Absolutely. Right, that's the- that's another big thing is that they are also buying you, not yeah. And people can forgive they can forgive a bad product, they cannot forgive bad service. Um I think that if you again, this is just goes what we've been talking about all these episodes is you need to maintain the relationship first above all above all else. You know, in an effort to wrap this up, I guess this is a first warning to people that they should probably t- take another look at Thumbtack with this new feature. Um it's not conclusive yet, but Ryan has a hunch that this can be a game changer. Well, and, and uh, th- this is another thing is that if there are so many people that are offering, you know, a cheaper photo booth option or a lower end model or whatever, you kind of just have to go with it. And, you know, again, we do not sell for ourselves. We sell to others. If we can have the coolest thing that we have in our house, if no one buys it, it means absolutely nothing. We absolutely design for other people. I think that we just ride the wave, we give them what they want, and we have a good time and, you know, have money for our next vacation. I just, or children through college or, you know, whatever, cupcakes, money, I don't know. (laughs) Um, but But that's the thing is, I think that there is an absolute stigma of 
you know, I don't want to offer a lower end product. I'm not low end. Da 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 da. da. That uh, money is just as green. Yeah. And I don't care who the hell it's coming from. I you will take the next the strip club event in a heartbeat. You got to give the people what they want. You got to give them what they want. It's that simple. I think though, I, I'd like to. I'd like to urge everybody to avoid as tempting as it may be falling into the trap of complaining of the market and the direction. And we used to be able to charge two grand and now we can't. And that's true. But even going back to like olden times where the titans of business like Rockefeller, uh, you know, Carnegie back in the early days of the country, it was always competitive. You know, even while Rockefeller's building standard oil, uh, that was the theme. Prices go lower. You, you serve the customer and you just have to roll with it. I think that we have to keep that in mind and not just uh, this try all- to preserve. Yeah, and, and, and one, one more thing to throw in there. It's, it's kind of like the story of where Ford built the car and all the companies that were relying on horses were like, ah, what is that? We're going to keep building horses. And a few years later, they were all out of business. You don't want to be the horse. No, this absolutely speaks to innovation. And if, if, our, if our industry has become stagnant, or saturated, it's because we've allowed ourselves as individuals to not keep offering the next thing. Um, you know, we just did a couple interviews, slider booths, 3D, you know, robotics, all that stuff is the wave of the future. That's where we need to be putting our efforts. Yeah, totally agree. So do yourself a favor, get on Thumbtack, check out the new feature, test it out, see if it works for you and let us know. I want to know if it's working for you what you're doing to make it work. And hopefully we can do a follow-up episode sharing some stories from people that are listening. And, you know, even if it didn't work out, uh, we'd love to hear from you and, and share it on a future episode. Homework, homework, homework. Do a thumbtack profile. Try it out for 30 days. Let's see if it works. Thank you so much to us for doing this episode today. Please submit your questions. We love to hear them. www.superboothers.com. Would you like a Super Boothers coffee mug? They're now available in our store at superboothers.com slash shop. If you would like a transcript of today's episode, you can go back to the beginning and write down every word as we say it. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next week.